Hello everybody and welcome back to another Addicted Fishing tutorial. My name is Jordan Kanigi and today we're coming at you with a 101 lesson on how to use spinners to catch trout. So if you guys want to learn more about this really fun method, stay tuned, it's coming at you right now. So first and foremost, what we're gonna talk about when talking about spinner fishing for trout is your rod selection. What I have is an Okuma Salilo two to six pound rod. Any brand of rod will work just fine for you as long as it's that ultralight action. You don't want a big heavy rod, anything over that 10 pound rating because you won't be able to cast as well with that stiff rod. You want something with a nice light action tip like this one here, very soft. It makes it easier to cast as well as it makes it a lot more fun to fight the fish. What I have on here for my reel is a two or a 3000 series reel. This is an Okuma Safina reel. I never discourage anybody from buying a higher quality reel because it'll last you longer and it can be used for multiple different styles of fishing. So the line that I have on this reel is a 20 pound braided line. This is made by Tough Line. This is our Addicted Enforcer line. Comes in a really cool orange color so it's very easy to see. That high vis line can be very imperative sometimes so that you can see your line on the water and it allows you to cover the structure of the lake a lot better that way. I like anywhere from a 10 to a 20 pound line rating with that braided line because it casts very nicely. If you go below that 10, it starts to tangle up, especially when you're throwing these spinners like this because that blade spins and it has the potential to twist up your line. So once I've run that braided line through all my guides out my tip, I'm gonna take the end of that braided line and I'm gonna tie on just a plain barrel swivel. And this is a size six barrel swivel. So what that barrel swivel is gonna do is it's gonna allow me to counteract the spin of that blade so that my line doesn't start to get a twist in it, as well as add a little stealthiness because I'm gonna tie that high-vis braided line to the one side and then I'm gonna tie a 10 pound or an eight pound fluorocarbon to the other side with about three to four feet a castable length so that I, that fish isn't seeing that braided line right next to that spinner, which has potential to spook it and make it not bite. So the way I'm gonna attach this line to this swivel, I'm just gonna do a normal fisherman's knot, a clinch knot. I'm gonna go through the eye, pull it tight, I'm gonna take my tag hand, I'm gonna wrap it seven times around the main line that's going through the eye of that swivel. Then I'm gonna take that bitter end and put it right back through the hole that I created by making that little eye in the line, just like so. I'm gonna hold on to that end, I'm gonna pull it tight, and there we have it. You can trim that tag end or you can leave it. I like to trim it, just make sure you don't dump it off into the lake or into the river, wherever you're at. Like so. From there, I'm gonna take a 10 pound fluorocarbon and I'm gonna use about three feet. So I'm gonna go from my chest all the way out to the length of my arm. And I have pretty big arms, so if you're, if you're a little bit smaller person, you might wanna go a little bit extra. But you don't wanna go more than about two to three feet of bumper. Uh, what we're calling the bumper line is this fluorocarbon because you won't be able to cast it. You especially don't wanna make that bumper line longer than your rod because this barrel swivel, you're not able to reel through the tip of your rod. But what this is doing, again, is it's counteracting the spin of that spinner blade so that your line's not twisting, as well as creating a barrier for you to add weight and, again, creating that stealthiness with that fluorocarbon line. So to the other end of my barrel swivel, I'm just gonna add my fluorocarbon. And again, the pound rating that you're gonna use here really is gonna depend on the kind of lake that you're fishing. Is the water clear? Is the water dirty? Is there a lot of pressure? Is there a lot of fish? So on and so forth. So I'm going with a 10 pound test because we might be able to catch some big fish today. I wanna make sure I don't lose them. But if you're fishing a lake or a pond that gets a lot of pressure, be sure to downsize that line rating to that six or that eight pound test so that those fish aren't gonna be quite as spooky. I'm gonna use that same clinch knot on that fluorocarbon side, same thing I did to attach my, my braided line. And there we have it, there's my leader. So I have th about three, three and a half feet all the way down to my spinner itself. So now that we've talked about our rod selection and our gear setup, we're gonna start talking about our spinner selection, which is very, very important, probably the most important part of this tutorial. So if you guys have any questions along the way here, be sure to comment them below, and we'll do our best to comment back and answer your guys' questions the best we can. What I have here sitting in front of me is basically every single style of spinner. We have our rooster tails, we have our panther martins, we have our torpedo bodies made by Steelhead Slammer, we have our bell bodies by r &B. and as you'll notice just right now, a lot of these spinners I have sitting here are on the little bit larger side. The reason I like to go a little bit larger in my spinner selection is for castability. The small spinners do work, so having a good variety and buying a multitude of colors, as you can see, I have, I have red body gold blade, I have all white silver blade, I have the old fashioned chartreuse and silver blade, and it rolls right over in here. Different blade colors, different blade sizes, and different blade shapes, as you can see, can be very, very important in actually being able to target different styles of biting fish. That being said, we're gonna start with one and then we're gonna keep switching 
throughout the day changing our presentation and changing our size. And I'll show you more about that once we start fishing here. But your spinner selection has to be very versatile. Pick a multitude of colors, pick a multitude of sizes, and pick a multitude of blade styles. So with all that being said, I'm gonna quickly go over what the difference is in between each one of these styles of spinner. They all have a different trait and they all work differently in certain situations. So I'm gonna talk about the rooster tail first. What makes a rooster tail? The main differences in the rooster tail, one is the body profile, two, the blade style and size. This is a willow blade, so it's one that takes a lot less water current to get to spin. Like something like these bell bodies or these more like steelhead style spinners, you need that current, you need more speed, whether you're reeling faster or whether you're in a boat, but these fish the slowest. So going over to the Panther Martin now, what is the Panther Martin? The Panther Martin one, why I like it so much is its weight. This is probably twice the weight of this spinner here, even though it's a smaller profile. The thing about it is it has a thicker blade, creates a, takes a little bit more tension, a little bit more water speed or reeling speed to get that blade going, but it sinks a lot faster. So it gets down in that strike zone quickly. If those fish aren't up by the surface and they're down by the bottom of the lake or the pond that you're fishing, you're gonna want something like this that's a little bit heavier. And as you can already tell, is it has a Vibrax blade, which you can hear that jingle. You hear that thing bouncing, you hear it jingling around. It creates that little bit of a sonic wave through the, through the zone where those fish are, where they can actually feel and hear that spinner before they even can see it. So the Panther Martin is a lot better for depth and for speed. If you want your spinner to be going faster and you want to entice that quicker bite, but give those fish a little bit less time to, to think about it, the Panther Martin's your lure. Then we'll go to the torpedo body. The torpedo body cuts through the current the best. So if you really want to get down and deep onto the bottom of the lake, you're going to want to use a spinner like this. The body makes up most of the weight of it. So this thing is probably a quarter ounce or so, a little bit heavier. And the thing about this spinner is that it will get down in any sort of water. If you're fishing a creek or a river, that thing's going to sink straight to the bottom and you're going to be able to fish it through the strike zone. And it's going to snag up a lot less because it has less surface area. Now jumping over to last but not least, the Vibrax style. This is an R&B, just normal silver. But the main difference in the Vibrax spinner or that bell body is the noise that it makes. This is the noisiest spinner that you can really get. And the thing about that vibration and that sonic wave is that it can really attract those fish when they're not in the mood to bite. They think something's wrong, they think that fish is wounded or whatever bait that it is. And honestly, sometimes it just pisses them off. So having that Vibrax along with all these other style of spinners can really make you more versatile out here on the lake, being able to tune into different styles of bites. So last but not least, putting this thing on your line. I'm gonna do just my normal fisherman's knot again. Normal clinch knot to my 10 pound test. That's coming off of my barrel swivel here. I'm gonna use my Old Faithful Panther Martin, gold blade, black body. Now we're gonna start showing you guys actually how to fish these. So now that we've covered our entire setup, we're gonna start talking about the methods of fishing these spinners for these trout. Really, movement is the biggest key to fishing these and being successful. And I don't mean movement with the spinner, I mean movement with your feet. Covering a lot of ground, the, the spinner is a searching tool. You're able to cast and cover a lot of water without having your stuff just sit there. So that being the case, you wanna really look for rollers, you wanna look for signs of life, you wanna look for fish that are jumping out of the water, and give yourself some sort of key on where you wanna be fishing in that lake. A lot of times, if I'm in a small enough lake, I'll do a full circle around the entire thing. And sometimes you'll catch fish on every single little edge of it. Breaking the water down in front of you like a pie chart can make you a lot more successful. And what I mean by that is starting your cast from one side, whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise, and slowly working your way across the area you have in front of you will allow you to cover the most water. And then I'm gonna either walk down the bank or I'm gonna move my boat. So I'm gonna start doing that. I'm gonna cast a few times here, and then I'm gonna start moving around, and then I'll show you guys a couple other methods. Okay, so now that I've covered my entire pie chart here, I'm gonna switch my spinner's presentation. And when I change my presentations, I like to be pretty drastic in that change. So I'm gonna go from a gold blade, black body, to a silver blade, white body. Completely different contrast, and we're gonna see if that helps us get a bite. All right, back to my pie chart. So the speed that you retrieve your spinner is probably the most important part of your presentation. As you can see here, now that I'm using this rooster tail, because it doesn't sink as fast, I can reel a lot slower than I was with the Panther Martin. Really just making sure that spinner blade is spinning by feeling that little bit of resistance is all you're looking for. You don't need to reel super fast, you don't need to reel super slow, and especially if you start getting bites as you're reeling in and you're feeling that tap tap, you want to keep consistent on that speed so that that fish doesn't lose interest. One question I get a lot is how do you know when you're hitting the bottom? 
And the best way to fish a spinner is not to let it fall all the way to the bottom. If you're fishing a lake and you have an idea of how deep it is, I like to let that spinner be suspended. I don't like to let it go all the way down to the bottom. One, because these things can be kind of expensive and I don't want to be hanging up on rocks and on structure on the bottom. And two, because those fish are looking up, they're looking to hunt and they're looking for food. So having this thing up off the bottom a little bit and in that strike zone where they can come up and pursue it is gonna make them a little bit more applicable to bite. All right, so now that we've covered our spectrum here in front of us, we're gonna move locations, go to a little bit deeper water and show you another trick on how to fish these effectively. Okay, so now we've switched sides of the lake to a spot that's a lot deeper. I know it's about 15 to 20 feet deep on this side of the lake, so to counteract that, I'm gonna add weight to my spinner and the way I'm gonna do that is just with a couple of split shots. And what I mean by split shots are these little guys right here. I like to use the bigger ones. Bigger ones are better, that way you don't have to put so many on to add that weight. So what I'm gonna do here, this is a number four split shot. I'm gonna add two number four split shot above my swivel. And why I want these above my swivel is because when I go to whip and cast this out there, I don't want those split shots to slide down and end up right on my, on my spinner. You want the, the weight separated from the spinner. The spinner should be all by itself. So all I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna use my, my fingernail. I'm gonna crimp it right to that braided line, push it down with my fingers. Same thing right here with the other one. Push it there, crimp it down. Then I'm gonna use my pliers and give it a nice sturdy pinch. That way they're not gonna come flying off and knock somebody out. Now what that's gonna do is that adds about a half ounce of weight to my line. So that's gonna allow me to get down to that 20 feet. And what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna cast out here and I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like when this thing hits the bottom. And again, that's a big question I always get from a lot of people. And again, if you guys have any questions or comments on this video, be sure to be commenting below and we'll answer them. But I'm gonna cast this out and I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it hits the bottom. So I'm gonna go out, my line's falling. And what you're gonna see is this little bit of a, it's a little bit of a V weight coming off of my line. And as it keeps falling, and falling, I'm gonna close my bail, and I'm gonna let that thing fall. And as long as I can see that movement and my wake on my line, I know it's still falling. What will happen when it's not falling anymore is I'll see, it, I'll see that stop, I'll see that little ripple move away from my line, and you'll see no more movement of that line falling down into the water, which it's done right there, just hit. So once that's happened, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a jerk, I'm gonna yank it up off the bottom so I can get that spinner blade started, and then I'm just gonna do a nice steady reel with my tip down right by the water, allowing myself all that sensitivity out through the tip of my rod, and that way I could feel that bite as soon as that fish grabs it. So using that same pie chart mentality and working that area in front of you clockwise or counterclockwise with that weight is gonna help you get down in front of those fish in zones that normally a spinner this small could never get down to. So now that we've covered fishing from the bank, now that we've covered how to fish deeper in the water column, we're gonna go over the last but not least best method of how to fish with these spinners, and it's trolling. So if you have a boat, if you have a kayak, if you have a canoe, anything that you can get out on the water, this method that I'm about to show you is gonna work really well. We're gonna use this exact same setup with these inline weights because you're gonna to wanna to get this down. Unless you're fishing a very shallow lake that's three to five feet deep, you're not gonna to wanna to add any weight because that spinner weight, depending on which style of spinner you're using, is gonna be plenty to get you down there. But I'm using this this, this uh, rooster tail still. I'm gonna leave my two number four split shots on there and then I'm gonna start trolling this across the lake. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So the first key to when you start to troll these is to create some movement in your boat. Again, whether you're in your kayak or whatever it is, you wanna start moving in the direction you wanna troll first before you cast your line out so that your stuff doesn't just immediately sink to the bottom and snag before you can get more momentum going again. The distance behind the boat is very crucial for when you're doing this. I like to keep it about 50 to 60 feet behind the boat. So just a nice light cast with all that weight, nice general light cast, gets about 50 feet out behind the boat. I'm gonna close that bale immediately. I'm gonna throw it in a rod holder or across my lap, depending on what situation you have. And then I'm gonna start going at a nice tempo. The best angle, that it's all about your line angle when you're trolling like this. You want your line at a 45 degree angle towards the water, because that's gonna give you that pitch. So if I throw 60 feet of line out and I have that 45 degree angle, I should be fishing at about 10 to 15 feet. And I'm gonna keep that tempo going. The key is, is to just keep an eye on your rod tip. If your rod tip is bent, you can tell there's pressure against it, and you can even see that little bit of a vibration from that rod tip. You know you're down there and your spinner blade is spinning and you're fishing effectively. The next step is to create some sort of a grid pattern. See the lake you have behind you and start doing either figure eights or zigzags through certain areas. What I like to do is I like to do full circles around the lake and then I like to start cutting back and forth across depending on the shape of that lake. Sometimes the lake won't allow you to go back and forth, you can only troll one direction. But keeping that mentality of breaking the lake down mathematically and covering general areas are gonna help you find those schooled up trout. 
The thing about trout and biting spinners is it's a very aggressive bite. These fish see it from a distance, they swim over and eat it, and a trout biting spinner is the one you wanna go after because they're the easy ones to catch. So getting it down in front of them, keeping it in front of them, and making sure it goes the right speed is the real crucial technique that you guys will have to learn as you go along. All right, everyone, that's all for today. All I want you to do next is comment below with what sort of tutorial you guys wanna see next. We're here to help you guys get better at fishing and go out and enjoy the outdoors more. So comment below with the tutorials or some of the things that you wanna learn more about, and we'll be sure to get those videos to you. If you guys wanna see more awesome trout content just like this, be sure to go up here and click this link to this next video. Be sure to subscribe, turn your bell on, give us a thumbs up if you like this video, and comment below, and you could be the comment of the day just like this guy right here. Thank you so much, you guys. You stay fishy, and we'll see you out there.